Hi, welcome to Revenue Marketing Television, the CMO Insight Series. I'm your host, Jeff Pedowitz, President and CEO of the Pedowitz Group. Today as our guest, we have Peter Isaacson, who is Chief Marketing Officer at Demandbase, one of the leading ABM vendors uh, in the world. So Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, demand base really is an amazing story. Uh, and, and, and I remember first working with the company, gosh, a good eight or nine years ago. It's gone through several iterations, but um, what it's doing today is, is really pretty impressive. And it, what's your take on that? Just obviously you're now CMO. Um, where, where is the company going? Yeah, well, uh, so it's been quite a ride. I joined about four and a half years ago. Uh, and one of the first things that we did uh, when we joined was really identify ABM as the, the, the category that we wanted to create. And we just made a collective decision to double down on that. So part of my job became kind of the traditional aspects of, of uh, CMO, uh, demand gen, developing opportunities, um, creating some demand, things like that. But the other half of our uh, job really was to uh, create this new category called account-based marketing. Uh, and that's been, in some respects, one of the more challenging, but also one of the more fun aspects of, uh, of our marketing job so far. Trends are interesting, right? I think back three years ago, when, four years ago, when you guys took up the mantle on this, you know, you had John Miller and Gageo, you know, there was a show, you might see one or two vendors that were even mentioning ABM. Uh, we were at the, the B2B MX show, back in February, there had to be at least 30 vendors there <laughs> uh, heavily focused on, on ABM. So as a market leader yourself, you know, what, uh, I guess in part it's validating, right? That, that everyone's really starting to jump in, but then now how do you, um, I guess, how do you differentiate and separate from the pack? Well, I gotta say that's part of the fun of creating a category because um, four and a half years ago when I started talking about category creation to the rest of the company, uh, we were really the only ones talking about account-based marketing, uh, and uh, we really had an extremely differentiated product because we were really the only ones that could take a truly account-based approach. What I was telling the company at the time, what, though, was as we're on this journey to create a category, the worst thing that will happen is if no other competition comes in the market being the only company talking about what we're calling a category does not a category make. So it sounds scary, but the best thing that's going to happen to us is that we're going to get some stiff competition that other vendors are going to see value in this market space and opportunity in the category and jump in and, and do it. And, and that's exactly what's happened. And it's been exactly as I predicted. It's been both rewarding and scary because we went from being really the only voice out there as a technology vendor banging on the ABM drum. Now we track about 60 different companies that in varying degrees talk about ABM, have an ABM solution, building out an ABM platform. So for us, that's required a change in strategy from um, talking about kind of why ABM is great and, and what it is to how we're better, how we're differentiated, how you should think about ABM that demand base offers versus some of our competitors. I, I think there's some interesting parallels with the, the marketing automation market, right? So for Definitely. a while it was just Eloqua, right? And then, and then you had HubSpot and Marketo and, and all these other vendors coming in. Yeah. Um, and, and then in a lot of ways that was good too, because as, as they start to compete with each other and create more education in the market, people really start to understand. Um, one of the things I see though as a service provider for ABM is there are some prerequisites, right? That clients have to get right before they could move in, um, data, uh, lead management, content, alignment with sales, uh, just about the structure. Um, are there other things that you see that, that, um, that paved the way for successful ABM? All of, all of the things that, um, that you mentioned, although I will say that, um, one thing that we advocate against is, um, kind of navel gazing for too long. Uh, too often we see companies saying, you know what, we want to do ABM, but we're just, we, we, we just have so much stuff to sort out. So we're going to, we're going to work on this or that, and we're going to talk to sales and we're going to build out this data and that data, and we're going to build out a strategy and figure out our change management plan, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the, the challenge I think with that is that you can spend a year kind of getting all the pieces in place 
um, when actually you can get uh, an ABM program off the ground and getting driving impact with um, yourself fairly quickly. Um, that doesn't mean it's a comprehensive ABM strategy, but I think starting small and building is better than delaying for an excessive amount of time, a year, year and a half, we've seen companies kind of dither um, and, 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 and really just better to jump in and start learning. So what would be a good example, Peter, of, of an ABM program that a company could put in quickly? You know, I think the, the first thing that, uh, that you can do is just getting a baseline, right? You've, you know, a lot of companies already have a target um, list of accounts that they're going after. Sometimes it's just the accounts that sales have chosen. Sometimes it's a more coordinated effort where sales and marketing have come together and done some data analysis. Sometimes you've even used, you know, predictive tools or a, a, a intent or something like that. But most companies that we start to work with say, yeah, we've got some form of a target account list. If you've got that, it might not be perfect, but get a baseline on it. Find out like what's going on with those target accounts. Are they coming to your website? If they're coming to your website, are they engaging with the content that you've got? Are they bouncing very quickly? Just get a quick understanding of what's happening with those target list of accounts. The next thing that um, is, uh, is, I think, can be a quick win is segmenting a group of those accounts and initiating some account-based advertising against them. Rarely do I talk to a company that they say, you know what, we're good at the top of the funnel. Everything's, everything's set there. We've got all the companies that, you know, they're engaged with everything like that. Usually, most cases, most of the time, companies have a top of the funnel issue. So initiating some account-based advertising and get, getting a win there can be a fairly quick path to getting results and showing yourself, your marketing team, your management team, your sales team, that an account-based approach can actually drive some results for you. Important not to stop there. I think too often folks kind of equate account-based marketing to advertising. So um, there's, it's a more comprehensive strategy than that. Um, but I think you can definitely get some quick wins uh, off the ground fairly quickly with, uh, with an ABM approach. So let's talk about drinking your own champagne, so to speak. So, cause it's been about three and a half years. How does demand base implement? demand base and, and ABM? Sure. Um, you know, I, I probably shouldn't even admit this, but the dirty little secret at demand base was when that I first started, um, we weren't using our own, uh, our, our own products very effectively. Uh, in fact, we weren't doing ABM as a whole very effectively. We had, uh, when I came in, um, the list of target accounts we had was something like 28,000, um, which I had to communicate like that's not a target account list that's basically <laughs> everyone um and, and when i say a dirty little secret we were literally running totally counter to what we were advocating in the market so it, it, it was not a good position to be in um, we initiated what we called uh internally project alpo um to eat our own dog food drink our own champagne if you will we probably should have uh, named it Project Move Clico and, and <laughs> given it a classier name, but uh, it was Project Alpo. And that was something that we just embarked on to say, you know what, we are not only going to um, be the primary power users of our technology, we also want to be customer zero for the product team. We want to be the true beta testers of everything that we do and provide a loop back on what we're using, what we're finding valuable, what we need to um, accomplish here. Uh, and that's, that's really been a journey that we've been on for the past uh, four and a half years and something I'm proud of, but also the team is quite proud of because they've, they've really stepped up the game to be power users of not just demand base, but of marketing technology as a whole. I mean, it's very clear ABM is, is getting a, a very strong foothold. A lot of companies are starting to adopt it now. What are some of the bigger roadblocks though that you see? I mean, you had mentioned some people are trying to make it too complicated, maybe you know, uh, trying to do too much before they could even get started. What else? Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we see is, um, you know, sometimes marketers just continue to have a massive divide with their sales team. And um, it, it's one of those sad but true kind of things that occurs out in B2B companies still far too often. 
and you know they try to engage their sales team and they're they're you know trying to get sales leadership on board and you know too often at certain types of companies um, certain verticals the sales team just looks at uh, marketing as you know brochureware and uh, and party planning uh, so getting sales on board can be a challenge for some folks um, as quite honestly as astonishing as it seems in this day and age but what we advocate is, you know, even if market, even if sales leadership uh, is, um, you know, against you, even if you know the whole sales team won't get on board, there's always a few folks within the sales team that are leaning forward, that are leaning in, and willing to try new things and willing to partner with you. And you know, sometimes it's you know Bob who is managing the financial services vertical, and sometimes it's Vanessa who is the Northeast territory manager. But find those salespeople that are willing to lean in and work with them on an account-based approach. Show success with them. And one thing sales guys or sales salespeople are really good at is they see when something's working with their counterparts and they want to know exactly what they're doing and how they're getting those results. And you start with, um, you know, a coalition of the willing, if you will, um, the folks in sales that are willing to kind of jump into this, get success with them. And then, uh, then you can progress through the sales organization. Talk, let's talk, talk a little bit more about your strategy. So the first part I was, was, was repositioning and focusing on, on ABM and, and you guys are doing a great job with that. Now from here, um, is this, mostly an upper market play for a demand base? Do you want to take ABM to the world? I, you know, where, where do you guys see yourself going? Yeah, uh, certainly we're having some success outside of uh, North America. Uh, so we've got an office in, uh, in the UK now, and uh, we've got a, you know, a fairly decent percentage of our business that's coming from Europe. Uh, we do think that eventually this can go to Asia um, and, and other regions. Uh, but truthfully, there's so much opportunity here domestically that that will continue to be a focus for us. Um, I guess the couple of things that we're thinking about in, uh, in terms of our strategy is I mentioned how we've, we've kind of moved from the what is ABM and why should you do it. Most folks are kind of giving us a, yeah, 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 we get that part. They want to know how they can do world-class ABM. So we've really transitioned our strategy including our content and our demand gen efforts and everything else around how, like how do you do world-class account-based marketing? Um, so that's one aspect of it. We've also taken a sharper kind of point to what really differentiates demand base versus other folks, because, you know, as we all know, a lot of, you know, the, the, the market um, goes out, does the research beforehand, understands kind of who their, um, uh, who the competitors are, and now they want to just understand how you're differentiated. So we've really got um, very focused on that. But I think what's really going to um, make a dramatic change in the next couple of years for marketers overall, but also um, folks that are that are directing their attention at ABM, is just um, how kind of things like uh, next best action and how data is actually going to help trigger some automated activities and programs uh, that will make marketing far more efficient and far more, uh, 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 their performance far greater in reaching kind of the right people at the right company with the right message. And I think that's where it's going to get really exciting for ABM. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of exciting things going on now with data and AI uh, and predictive behavior, predictive activities. Yeah. And, um, how do you how do you think the role of marketing is going to change? Because as technology becomes more uh, prominent, right, we're using AI more to help make decisions. Does the amount of people you need in marketing go down? Do you need more specialization? Does it increase? I mean, how how do you see the marketing organization of tomorrow? looking. Yeah. So I, I, I um, said this a while ago uh, when someone asked me to comment about, uh, about artificial intelligence. And I said, artificial intel intelligence is eventually going to destroy the world, but not before it does really cool things for B2B marketing. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. So we're kind of in that sweet spot where it hasn't destroyed the world and it's doing some cool things for B2B marketing. So we've just got to take advantage of that time that we're in right now. Um, 
you know, I, I, I'm not a, 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 a doom and gloom kind of person that thinks that, you know, marketing teams will be cut in half and we'll all be kind of, you know, feeding the robot and, and doing things like that. I think the world of B2B marketing is made so much more exciting and so much more powerful um, with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, I think that uh, you're always going to have to be directing uh, your AI efforts, directing your machine learning, directing your technology um, in a way that's actually going to support your business, just like we're doing right now using AI with advertising, using AI with our sales insights. Um, there's still people behind the curtain that are helping direct those efforts, and that's really important. But I think what is truly gonna, um, I, you know, I think there are two points that are really gonna differentiate marketing in the future. One is going to be um, this continued focus on data and technology and enabling technology across your marketing department, and that's gonna continue to be a premium, and there's gonna be a different skill set than existed 20 years ago or even 10 years or five years ago for that. But I think the other thing that is starting to come back into fashion, and it's kind of a shame that it, it, it ever fell out of favor, but is true messaging and creativity and storytelling. And that's something that AI and machine learning really can't match um, now or probably in the next five or 10 years at least. Um, it's that kind of innovation and creativity that human beings uh, are great at and it's a skill set that used to exist within marketing and kind of fell out of favor as we got obsessed with data but I think that'll make a, uh, a pretty big comeback and already is. Yeah I agree I mean, there, there, look there is no substitute for the story right I, you go back to the days of the bible or in nomads and mythology that's what we did right we went from uh, campfire to campfire we told stories and that's how we relate to everything. And, and the better the story, the better the creativity, the more engaging it is. Um, technology, I think, amplifies it or helps distribute it more, but it, it doesn't, it, there is no replacement for human creativity. Totally agree. Totally agree. Well, great points, Peter. Uh, pleasure having you on the program. Uh, fantastic to see all the success at Demand Base and all the great employees that you have over there. So thank you again for being on the show. Thank you, Jeff. It was a pleasure. You bet.